one for her cheeks, one for her eyes, and one for her lips. Each comes with a wish. Use them wisely, warns Pam. The family opens her first compact, touches her cheeks with color and makes her first wish, a gown of tartan. Pan scoops water from the river and it becomes a flowing tartan fabric in his hands. He plucks a magic kilpin from his ear, pierces the cape, and reveals that this is a material that can morph into any shape or silhouette just by wishing it. Pan stomps his hoof three times, and a sailing ship floats down from the sky. To Glamora Castle, Pan shouts, and the wind fills the sails, lifting them into the air. Quince McGregor, the hedgehog guard at Glamorgan Castle, bristles when he sees the uninvited ship approach. He orders his close clansmen to shoot the ship out of the sky. Pan summons a mammoth bat to carry my family safely to the castle. <clears throat> it swoops down from a black cloud and settles at Mafano's feet. Pan hands on his sword and lifts her onto the winged beast. She rides high out of reach of the flying quills. The moon, watching the battle from above, Shrouds the hedgehog bounces in a frosty mist, freezing them in their tracks. Chapter 2. The battered ship is silent in a snowdrift. The hedgehogs are frozen like garden statues. Pan and company gain entrance to the castle and race to join the family. Prince Vengeja, the noble black swan, decked out in black lace cuffs, jabot, and black velvet doublet, holds court in the great hall, lighted by a striking chandelier that stands out like a dangerously handsome guest. Pan bows low and says they have come to honor his highness with gifts. Boxy Lord Foxy comes out swinging, presenting the Black Swan Prince with an epic poem told in three brandy rounds. within the folds of his tartan cape, a most amazing tartan bear. But Fanway could not take her gaze from the handsome bear, his unblinking eyes wide with wonder. If only, she muses. But Fanway opens her second compact, sweeps color over her eyelids. She closes her eyes and wishes for the tartan bear to come to life when the clock strikes midnight. Let's liven up this place, shouts Pan. Chandelier crystals tinkle ominously, and the rafters groan as Pan pipes swell with his heavy, immortal breath. The black swan, feeling livelier than he has in years, leads the highland fling. The chandelier begins to swing, clinking with fury. Suddenly loosened by the reveries, it crashes down upon the bridge! The clock strikes twelve. Surprising everyone, the tartan bear comes to life. He jumps to the immense chandelier and with supernatural strength lifts it from the prince's crushed body. But Fanway grasps her third compact. Applying brilliant color to her lips, she makes her third and final wish. But Fanway kisses the swan's cheek, leaving a glistening lip print, wishing him restored to life. There is a flash. The swan's feathers flutter. He rises and trumpets a song. The wise moon watching through the windows beams as the family metamorphoses. 
Her passion excites the magical cloth as she makes itself into a red royal tartan frock. Mephenwe's selfless wish granted her this greatest desire. She is now a fairy once again. Mephenwe and Prince Magadia rise together in the air, and the valiant tartan bear salutes them. And everyone lives glamorously ever after. The end. <laughs>